Okay, friends, the Alec Baldwin saga continues. Today we are talking the phone, the drawing. What in the world was that? This new weird car video. Here, here's pretty much how I'm gonna frame what this Alec Baldwin, and I'll, I'm filming this on January 21st if you kinda need to know where we are in the dates because there's a lot of stuff that Alec Baldwin loves to put out there. Uh, when I started you know, talking about this, when I started reporting on it, uh, Alec Baldwin's, this story, it started out as a tragedy where you were kind of extending, I would say, an arm of sympathy to Alec Baldwin because obviously anyone in this position, we think of what was going on at the time, seems uh, like huge amounts of guilt would be going on, a lot of sorrow. You'd be beating yourself up about it to no end, and you know you don't. You'd, even if someone is reprehensible, even if someone is a bit of a, a jackass in public, like Alec Baldwin kind of has a tendency to be, you don't want to see someone. It's tough to see anyone suffer. And then Alec Baldwin kept coming out, you know, willingly. And, you know, you kind of expect that everyone's going to keep quiet, let the, you know, dead and let the family, let the let the dead lie and let the family mourn. Whereas in this situation, Alec Baldwin kept coming out, kept kind of feeling the need to speak, say lots and lots of different things. And it's, it, it's changed the narrative. That ABC interview totally changed my way of thinking about it. The man said he felt no guilt at all. He continually comes out with these videos that are saying that he bears no responsibility. And I think this is very important because people hate Hollywood. Most people absolutely hate Hollywood or find it intensely annoying. And Alec Baldwin is one of the titans of that industry. And seeing how Hollywood responds to this, seeing how a titan of that industry responds to an actual real-life terrible situation, I think informs a lot of people on how they should truly feel about this industry, about the people that make up this industry. And we're looking to see how are you going to react. Are you going to react with some level of character? Or are you going to react a little bit like a sleazebag? And, well, that's why we're following it, to see, you know, how is the industry actually going to respond to this. Two interesting notes about Alec Baldwin that I did not realize. His father was an actual firearms instructor. So any defense that is ever used to say that he doesn't actually know how any of this stuff works, blah, 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 I think you got to call BS on that. Also, just an interesting tidbit, his his lineage goes back to a man that came over from Europe on the Mayflower, which I find pretty fascinating. Like, this is someone that's been, the lineage goes back uh, decades, centuries. So this is, very, this is a stain not only on an old industry of, on America, but really a stain on that legacy, which goes back to even before the birth of America. So, first of all, the phone. The phone has now been turned over to the authorities. I don't think there's something wholly sinister in the fact that it took so long. Uh, he clearly is a suspect. There's a way that that stuff goes. I don't see that as wholly suspicious. But the way that that panned out, there is no way that he is able to claim that he is cooperating in any way. Next, there are these drawings, these very, very bizarre drawings. I'm going to read now. This is about a paragraph from an article. And... Uh, just to kind of give you an insight of how this is being reported on. In the middle of Baldwin's story, there were two photos of Alec. In both of them, he is standing against a wood-paneled wall, staring glumly at the camera as he holds up a drawing. In the first drawing, a frowning man says, Hello! And a woman in a bikini replies, May I help you? In the second, the man is lying down saying, Oh God, please help me, I'm dying. As the woman replies, Do I know you? Hilaria... Baldwin, uh, Alec Baldwin's wife, posted these two photos with the caption, Alec and his drawing of him and me, on the first and not dramatic at all on the second, along with a small video figure of herself sarcastically clapping. The photos were found by reporter Emily Miller, who tweeted one of them and asked if Alec Baldwin was taunting the sheriff investigating him for the shooting on the Rust film set. This story, like I said, went from, oh, it's an accident, to highly skeptical of Alec Baldwin. This now is starting to feel very deeply deluded. This does not feel like anyone who is quite honestly in their right mind. And I feel like the more this story progresses, it feels less like a story of uh, how is your character going to hold up and more of like a, are we actually watching someone lose their mind a little bit? There is no way that anyone in their right mind could actually put something out like this and feel like it's actually a good idea. And that goes on to that car video. The only way we can honor the death of Helena Hutchins is to find out the truth. That's what I'm working toward, insisting on, demanding, but setting aside all the, the hate, setting aside all the January 6th of it all. There it is. She found the Splenda packet. She found the Splenda packet. Where he is talking about 
um, this splendid packet for a long time. He's talking. He politicizes the whole thing by bringing up Donald Trump, by bringing up January 6th, which I don't understand at all. Just doing a, let me your thoughts on the car video. I felt like that is just a further example of not understanding how your actions are relating to the public. And maybe it's because he's got so many followers on social media that are like yes people to him and they give him what he wants to hear. Um, but then finally, there's this very weird lawsuit that's now going. He's being sued for $25 million now for something that does not even relate to this investigation. So quick sum up as to what this is about. Lance Corporal Riley McComb, he died in Afghanistan in 2021. A GoFundMe was then set up by his widow, whose name is Gianna. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. Alec Baldwin then sent a check to the corporal's sister around September of 2021. This is the sister of the fallen soldier. The sister then went to a protest on January 3rd of 2022 this month. It was something having to do with January 6th. I do not know what that is about. Um, and then Alec Baldwin then messaged this woman. Again, this is the sister, not the widow. And then they keep going at it. He's like sending inflammatory things at her. She's responding with inflammatory things. So he then posts this woman's information on his own Instagram. Uh, the, the sister, the one that was at the protest, the widow, the entire family is now getting harassed. A few of them are getting death threats. So they're now suing him for $25 million. Again, this has nothing to do with the rush shooting. I've got to say, this, he's already under investigation. He has another lawsuit from a member of the crew that says that he was involved in criminal negligence, which I think is probably the most likely case in all of this. I feel like the lesson in this story is that if you ever find yourself in deep danger and are very nervous, just ask yourself, is it the right move to just shut up? And in this case, I think it would be the best move for him to just shut up. Like, really, it is no one is doing anyone any favors. This is insulting to the family that is mourning the death of Hutchins. So I feel like that's a sum of where we are right now. I would say this went from unfortunate tragedy to celebrity out of touch to celebrity who might actually be losing it a bit. You, in the comments, let me know what you think is going on. And please, if you have not already, subscribe to 5-Minute Critic for future updates on reviews and movie news.